Steve Harvey is on his third marriage. Mm -hmm. His third wife was mistress to his second wife. <laughs> Yet, black people have anointed this <laughs> the oracle when it comes to black dating. I know, it's ridiculous. And here's something Tony Rock forgot to mention about Steve Harvey. His second wife was the mistress to his first wife, Marsha, and he straight up abandoned his first wife with three children. Chow, I have all the messy details. So Marsha met Steve Harvey at a mutual friends reception party when Steve worked as an insurance salesman and the two hit it off immediately. He then married Marsha in 1981 on Valentine's Day and they welcomed twin daughters, Brandy and Carly in 1982. Let's just say that Marsha probably didn't take enough time to know Steve deeply cause homeboy put her through hell. The thing is when he was working as an insurance salesman, he was good but when the money started coming in, he became a totally different man. Steve won the $50 first prize during his first shot of performance Forming, and soon after his true color started to show. First of all, while his days were spent working, his nights were spent at comedy clubs, honing his craft while Marsha stayed home with the children. He just started spending less and less time with them and eventually decided that his career was more important than his family. However, even though their marriage was pretty rocky by that time, Marsha and Steve Harvey had a son, Broderick Harvey Jr. But just like the twins, Broderick never had a relationship with his father and it's something he even admitted really affected him. I didn't really have my dad full time until my life until I was 16. Well, it was only a matter of time before Marsha decided that enough was enough and in 1994 they got a divorce and Marsha was left to raise their 13 year old daughters and two year old son alone and Steve even refused to pay child support. And that's not all because Steve also cheated on Marsha a couple of times. In fact, he began seeing and living with his second wife Mary Lee way before legally divorcing Marsha. Trust karma to work full time because Mary also suffered the same fate when Steve started seeing Marjorie when he was still with her and just like Marsha, Mary was abandoned. When I think about how quickly he moved forward from me to Marjorie, uh, that was disturbing. Apparently at one point Marjorie even called the family's house on their private unlisted number and when Mary picked up she pretended to check up on her application to work at Steve's suit company and that was one of the things that confirmed that Steve was cheating and the marriage was hanging on a thread. With all the emails and uh, the text messages and the different things that were that I was finding out about I thought the least that he could do, make me whole at the end of it. He, he left, he just left, walked out the door. Once he realized that uh, I was going to divorce him, he walked out the door, went right to New York, to our apartment that we had there, which I never got to see by the way, but and then she joined him there. Clearly, one thing Mary had in common with the first wife is that she was abandoned by Steve. She actually said that after the divorce from Steve, she was cut off from the lifestyle that she lived while Steve and even the designers that once begged her to wear their fashions no longer answered her phone calls. At one point, she even dropped a couple of YouTube videos exposing the heck out of Steve and even accused Steve and Marjorie of kidnapping her son. He took my Winton, took my Winton from me. He turned my son against me. And just so you understand that Steve never had the best intention for his first wife, Marsha, he admitted that he first saw Marjorie at a Memphis comedy club in 1987. Apparently, Marjorie walked in late while he was performing his set and he addressed her with some very memorable words. She came down front with her girlfriend. When I saw her, I quit breathing. Now, in 1987, Steve was still very much married to Marsha, but do you know what he said to Marjorie? He finally realized, okay, I gotta say something. He was like, oh, I'm sorry. I don't know who this is, but I'm gonna marry her. So it's either he was already having issues with Marsha or it was just proof of his cheating escapades. To some extent, I get Steve and Marsha divorcing because it was not working out between them, but abandoning her with three kids, that was nasty. And to make matters worse, during an episode of Steve the Show, Steve tried to justify leaving his first wife and kids, saying that he was trying to find himself. You gotta have this conversation with father. We've had this conversation. He had to understand what well, my decision that I made at 25, come on, man, come on, 25? I got twins at 25. What I'm doing making decisions. 
Well, a lot of people also said that it wasn't a valid reason to abandon Marsha and the kids because while Steve thought he was young and wanted to find himself, Marsha was the one left to raise three kids on her own. I mean, if she had also decided that she wanted to find herself, what would have happened to the kids, okay? Anyway, according to Steve, the children eventually forgave him and he said in an interview with People, years later they said to me, Dad, we didn't understand why you left us, but we know now you had to go. You didn't just belong to us. You belong to the world. That was emotional for me. However, even though Steve reconnected with his kids years later, people still say that he treats his adopted kids better than Marsha's children. In fact, if you look closely, you will actually realize that the twins have been unable to find common ground with Marjorie, who is fond of spending quality time with her large blended family. Carly and Brandy are usually absent in family events, like when Marjorie shared a video showcasing the Harvey family's festive home decor during Christmas, fans immediately commented on the twins' noticeable absence. And in several of the photos she has posted online with the children, the twins are also usually absent. It's like they don't really fit in. And obviously, Steve's favorite among the children is Lori, who gets literally anything she wants. I told Lori I was going to cut her off, and she just went, Daddy, stop. That was all she said was, don't, don't play, don't play. Because <laughs> Lori really thinks she's the special one. She really does. Lori, I told Lori I was going to cut her off because she's making a lot of money right now. And I was going to cut her off and she just started laughing. And then she said, well, and you're not going to speak to me anymore? I said, yeah, I'll still talk to you. According to a source, there was even some jealousy lingering amongst the siblings over Lori, who has been taking the spotlight with everything. The source said, Steve's got four biological kids with two previous wives and three stepkids with Marjorie. They're driving him crazy. He did the right thing adopting Marjorie's kids and loves them like his own, but there's a lot of dissension among the blended Harvey clan. Apparently, Steve's way of handling the feud has always been to throw money at them, buy them gifts, or just go into another room room to smoke cigars. Anyway, regardless of how Steve treats his kids right now, to the twins, Marsha remains a superhero as they always give shout outs like this where Carly wrote, I always love my mama. She's my favorite girl, my first teacher, my healer when I was hurt, my counselor when I was troubled, and my biggest cheerleader when I needed a push. You are the finest example of class, sophistication, dedication, and sacrifice. You showed me confidence, and if I ever felt defeated by the world, I called you and you built me back up so I could fight another day. You always spoke life into me. For her part, Marsha has really kept her life private and stayed out of the spotlight, but maybe it's because she doesn't want to revisit everything that she's been through when she was with Steve. But I'd love to know your thoughts on Steve abandoning Marsha and the kids to go find himself only to reconnect with them when he has millions. Do you think it was fair for him? Let me know your thoughts in the comment section below. Also, just a side note, what is Steve's obsession with women whose names start with Mar? Did you notice that too?